I'm Jay Taylor. I'm the editor of Jay Taylor's Gold Energy and Tech Stocks and uh, also the host of the radio show, Turning Hard Times into Good Times, which you can listen to live every Tuesday at three o'clock New York time at the Voice America Business Channel. I'm here now in this special report with Dr. Quentin Henning to try to get some insights into a couple of important news releases that uh, SK Mining put out this past week. SK trades in Canada under the symbol ESK, and you can buy it down here in the States as I have under the symbol ESKYF. About 145 million shares outstanding, more or less, and uh, uh, selling at um, about $2.35, 36 cents today in US money. Uh, welcome, Quentin, and thank you for joining me again. Thank you very much, Jay. Yeah, so uh, quite a nice intercept uh, that was reported by SK Mining on Monday, that's uh, February the 2nd. Uh, I believe it was something like 35 and a half meters, um, rating nine and a half grams per ton gold and 70 grams per ton silver. Yep. Uh, there were a number of other intercepts as well that were quite good, but this one was the, uh, the I'd say the headline number. Uh, and that's at the TV, I guess the TV and um, what's the other target there? Yep. TV. Jeff, the Jeff and TV, yeah, it's a big project, huge number of targets, I know, but those are the ones that you're focused on now, and uh, SK has 80%, I think Kirkland Lake has 20% of that project, but um, talk to us about the significance, what you've wrapped up this year's season, drill season, of the 2020 drill season, yes. what have you learned, and, you know, maybe specifically talk about the last press release, uh, and then maybe talk a little bit about where you're planning to, if you know what your plans are for exploration next year. Okay, let's, uh, let's talk about the meaning of what we've hit here. So a little context, the TB Jeff area is uh, similar mineralization to what Skeena is tackling up at the SK Creek mine. Okay, so mm -hmm. basically the type of target we're looking for are these precious metal rich VMS, vulcanogenic massive sulfide mm -hmm. deposits. They're, they were black smokers. You know, eons ago, they were black smokers on the seafloor. They expelled the, the metals. Uh, but you got to bear in mind that these deposits also have a root system to them. So as the fluids are coming out of the seafloor, uh, they actually interact, interact with the rock and stuff at the bottom of the seafloor, too. Uh, what we've hit at TV Jeff is actually the, the feeder system mm. of a VMS. Okay, yeah. so... So both, uh, both of the targets that we tested in this very short program that we, we were managed to get done last year, both targets are feeders. And they're, they're roughly two kilometers apart, but we see good evidence. There's a lot of, of con connectivity between the areas. You know, there's a lot of uh, evidence of sulfide mineralization in our SkyTem data that suggests these are just a small part of a much, much bigger trend. Now, the TV Jeff area, is on the east limb of an anticline. An anticline is when rock is folded like this. SK Creek and our Sibululu targets and stuff are on the west limb. We're, TB Jeff are over here on the east limb. Okay. So it's really interesting because we have now proven that there's considerable mineralization, in fact, high grade mineralization on the east limb of the anticline. Nobody really took that seriously prior to this. Okay, oh. so this is a big revelation. The other thing is, we are fully 13 kilometers south of the SK Creek mine. So when you, you start thinking about it, you think, my gosh, that's a big system. You know, I mean, that's not a little tiny uh, blip. This is a much bigger C4 system. So, so both of those give us a great deal of comfort. Now, now as far as the drill holes themselves go, the meaning behind uh, you know, the, these results, the takeaways that I think people should, should appreciate, first of all, we're seeing some nice stout intervals, you know, 10 or tens of meters of two, three, four gram gold equivalent like they see at Skeena. So we're seeing that kind of, that bulk tonnage type stuff. Mm -hmm. But we're also now seeing those SK Creek type grades. We had some, you know, fantastic results in inside of that 35 meters of, I think it's 35.5 meters of 10.6 gram gold equivalent. Inside of that, there's higher grade intervals. And, you know, there's like a 9.25 uh, meter interval uh, that's like 33 gram gold equivalent. You know, those are the kind of numbers that they saw at Skeena. Okay, so what I'm saying is, even though we're in the feeder zone, we think that slightly up section and somewhere in the very near neighborhood, 
we, we have a chance of finding an S, you know, call it SK Creek too. SK Creek was a phenomenal deposit. It produced 3.3 million ounces of gold. It produced uh, 160 million ounces of silver, but the grades were crazy. They were 46 gram per ton gold, head grade for life of mine. Okay, and there was 2.2 kilograms of silver uh, per ton, per ton. <laughs> okay, so these, the, these kind of deposits are extremely high value. And we truly think that the feeder systems that we've hit here are just at the beginning of this picture. I think as we sort out the geology, work our way up section, work our way laterally, mm -hmm. you know, we could find SK2. So I suppose that you'll, you'll be setting your drill targets out next year, uh, next summer, in search of uh, lateral extension of the feeder zone. Yes. So we have, you know, obviously we've got aggressive drilling in and around the, the current discoveries. Mm -hmm. but we have, we'll have four rigs on site. So we're going to have uh, two rigs focus, one on each of TV and Jeff and doing the step outs, you know, like systematic work. And then we're going to use the other two to test the other areas. For example, one rig will be over at Sib Lulu. Well, quite frankly, it's the natural extension of the SK deposit. Okay, so we've got a great series of targets over there. Uh, but then another rig, the fourth rig, will be testing new new sulfide targets. Okay, we've got at least a dozen extremely high quality targets lined up. So we're going to go nuts, uh, you know, this year. We raised the money in what was late November, I think. And I, I, you know, I urge the company to do so because with the uncertainties in the market, you know, yeah, let's you never know. Let's, Let's grab the cash and make sure we can get next year's program done. Uh, we've signed the drill contracts. We, you know, we're signing the helicopter contract. It's really important to get all these ducks in a row. So we we're in good shape. Yeah, that's uh, lots of money, and uh, certainly uh, keep producing the results, and it won't be hard to raise more when you need it. Um, yeah. Very very exciting story, no doubt about it. Uh, to find to have the prospects of finding another SK Creek type of deposit. Uh, maybe more than one. It's uh, it's very exciting, and I don't. Well, I think the market's starting to catch on actually a, a little bit. So it's yeah, it's uh, exciting days. But then I have to ask you about this uh, news release just today. This is uh, February fifth. That was this morning. A very uh, perplexing announcement. Whereas I think um, SK is going to has agreed to acquire I think 19, 19 or nineteen point five percent or something of of Gerobaldi. Um, what's that all about? Uh, well, okay. So, uh, we did, we announced this morning that we are acquiring 19.5% of Garibaldi's outstanding shares. Uh, this deal was cut. I talked to Eric and we agreed on the terms. Uh, I think it was Wednesday afternoon, somewhere in there. That's Eric Sprott. Uh, yeah, yeah. 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 Eric Sprott. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it was a quick and easy deal. Now, let's look at why and what this means for the company. Okay. First of all, uh, at, at SK, we have a world-class team working for us, including Thomas Monarchy, the professor out of the school of mines and John, De John De Decker, who's the postdoc who's, uh, working as our VP. Okay. We have very smart people in the VMS realm and guess what? They told me early on, Hey, there might be a little more going on over there. Uh, and I've, you know, our, let's just say uh, we have some geologic smarts at work <laughs> that say there's reason to take, to pay attention to that ground. Um, okay, so that's part of the picture. Uh, but it was also an easy deal for us. We're at a very strong position share price wise. Uh, it means minimal dilution. I think it's about 2% of our stock that we're paying Eric to, to take these shares. Uh, we also gave Eric a warrant. People say, well, why didn't you give him a warrant? Well, here's why. Uh, the warrant is priced at the, the closing yesterday. I think it's 282. Um, Can but it's also got an acceleration that kicks in in August. Okay, so so Eric knows full well that if we, I've talked to him, if we get this thing ramped up and we hit, uh, you know, hit a, a high price in, in August and, you know, it looks like we're on to, you know, something bigger than Ben-Hur, and we need to ramp our program up, guess what? There's a built-in financing right there. Okay, so this is this is a good outcome for all parties, uh, Eric, as well as us. But, you know, the reason, it's geologic. I'm a gold guy. I don't do nickel, okay? I, I mean, I appreciate what they've discovered. I, I think that's really intriguing, but it's not what we're looking at, okay? 
we're focused on these VMS systems. And I'll just say that we have some bigger picture view of what's going on here. Well, you're certainly one that's always looking at the bigger picture, that's for sure. And uh, Giraldi's project is where relative to the uh, SK projects? Yeah, the, the, it's interesting because it kind of sit to the west and the north to us, but there's a, there's a, a piece of SK ground that kind of wraps up and around and there's a big block inside of that, okay. we'll call it cherry stem area. So it, it kind of effectively, you know, ties together, a, well, it ties together some pretty critical ground. I, like everybody's focused on the SK anticline. We, we are too, don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. but we kind of know there might be a little more going on, so. Wow, very exciting. Uh, I mean, we're heading into the winter months and so probably not as much news for a little while. Um, you know, uh, some of us- No, I'm going to tell you right now, Jay, no. <laughs> no, there's gonna be news. Lots, lots of news, don't worry. There will be. <laughs> yeah, look, oh. look, we did a lot of work last year and We'll, we'll talk about some things over okay. the next couple of months. Well, that's now. always important because there's some people that like to, uh, you know, like to, time is money. And, uh, you know, if, if, if you don't want to, I've had it happen to me where I've gotten out of something thinking, well, there's not going to be any news for a while. And then when I want to get back in, the train has left the station and I missed the boat. So you know what? Uh, what you're saying is people... that would be a very risky uh yeah, that, that's what happened. Uh, I think the day we announced like silver was down sharply that day. And I think a lot of, you know, people who just said, ah, it's going to be a while, you know, yeah. that's fine. That's natural in these BC stories, you know, it's natural, but I can tell you this, you know, anybody sticking around is sticking around for the right reason. And we'll, we'll provide some more interesting uh, information over the next couple of months. Oh, looking forward to it. Thank you uh, so much, Quentin, for taking your time to share these insights with our viewers and uh, my subscribers for sure and, uh, and, and uh, shareholders of uh, SKA Mining. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Jay. All the best. Take care. Okay.